Good day, everyone. It is a beautiful Tuesday morning. Uh, hello, friends of the Red Deer Museum and Art Gallery. I'm Saya, and working with me today is Crystal. Hello. And we've got a project for you today called Gilded Insects. Uh, so what gilded means, to start, is something that is covered in either gold paint or gold leaf. So it's not made of gold, but it's made to look like gold. And these little adorable projects, uh, for those of you who like creepy crawlies, um, can be made into little magnets for your fridge. Uh, not gonna lie, when I first made the demo for this, I ended up making a few to put on my fridge because I just thought they were so darn cute. So what you'll need, we gave you your supply list at the beginning of the video, but as always, I like to run through what I've got in front of me. Uh, I have purchased some toy insects from, just, you know, your dollar store or uh, probably, you know, like a big store like Walmart probably has them. Uh, so you're going to want those. You're going to want some little wooden plaques. Again, uh, I got these at Dollar Tree. They're about six to a pack. You're going to want some paintbrushes, some magnets. Uh, you have the option to either get magnets that already have a sticky back on them, or if you have magnets hanging around that uh, you don't like anymore and want to repurpose, you can stick them to the back of these with some hot glue as well. Pretty flexible there. And lastly, we of course have some black paint and some gold paint. So a quick thing I'm going to discuss with you is the difference between types of gold paint because not all gold paint is created equal. So for this finished product that I have here I used golden brand acrylic paint. So goldens are your high quality high pigment paint. They're gonna cost you a little bit more but you're gonna professional quality. They are going to cost you a little more, but you're going to need to use less of it because they are highly pigmented, which means that uh, the color, there's a lot of it packed into one little glob of paint, so it goes very far. Uh, now, today, what we're working with are some yellow gold Martha Stewart craft paint and some dollar store gold. So you can still work with these just fine. Uh, but you're going to require more layers of them. Uh, so if you're doing this project after you watch the stream, I recommend having a hairdryer nearby uh, if you want to speed up the process of painting those layers um, because you're going to need a few more of them. So I did these two insects with kind of prepared them ahead of time. Now these are done with a combination of both of these cheaper gold paints and you know what they still look nice they just took a little longer a few more layers had to dry in between but you know you can really make do with whatever you have. Um, so let's get started. The first thing we're gonna want to do is paint our plaques. I'm gonna get that black paint going. Um, do you have I was totally thinking when you said more layers and more coats that I'm going to paint my bug first uh -huh. and then have it dry. And good then call. This and I can go back and forth. That is actually, you know what? I, that is a good idea. Uh, so while we're, I'm going to start with the bugs too because Crystal makes a good point there. The plaques aren't going to take as long to dry. Uh, so while I'm painting my two little bugs here, I'm going to tell you a little bit about, so in painting, you would refer to the technique of layering an undercoat of paint beneath your actual artwork. That would be called underpainting. However, because we're painting on colored plastic, the same principle applies. Uh, so we are painting gold, but what happens when you have one color underneath a color of paint that you're applying is the color underneath will subtly show through and it will affect how your eye perceives the color of the item that you're painting. So if you want a brighter gold, you can use these yellow insects. I see that Crystal is using a red one. How's that working out for you? Uh, it's okay. I can see the red. Uh, I just wanted the ant. So. <laughs> the ant's pretty cute. 
I am personally a fan of painting gold over black because I like when you get that little bit of dark uh, showing through. I feel like it gives it kind of like a rustic sort of look, yeah, you know? Definitely. And if you want a brighter gold, you could go with yellow. I think there were some green insects as well in the little packages we got. So, you know, you can experiment with different colors of the toy insects and, uh, you know, see how it looks, see how you feel. So when we're talking about paints, um, right off the get go, okay, so the black we're using is a student grade acrylic. Yes. And you can already see that it is, uh, it is covering a lot better than the dollar store paint on my butt. Mm -hmm. Because I can see the red underneath, but on my disc, it, one coat is, sufficient yeah basically coloring this quite nicely i just wanted to point that out since i can see the difference already mm -hmm. i always tell students too that there's nothing wrong with the different um grades of paint my big thing if you're going to splurge on anything have it be yellow so that's kind of like our gold yellow is yes yellow gold any of that it's really um it just you need more of it for it to compete with all the other colors, I think. Yeah. And I mean, yellow is kind of a light color too, right? So I can see where if your yellow isn't uh, highly pigmented, it would be easy to kind of get washed out, yeah. right? Yeah. And I definitely find that different qualities of paint can be used for different things. I find that, for instance, if I am working, say, with a canvas, I might use a student grade paint uh, from Michaels. A little, it, I'm okay with using a slightly lower quality paint if it's just I am painting a whole canvas one color and I'm going to be painting my image over that in better quality paints. So it's kind of figuring out what works for you. So I've got a layer on my little fly and my spider, and you can definitely see the difference between how the gold paint shows up over the yellow versus over the black of this little fly. I'm a really big fan of the little flies, honestly. They're super cute. If you're one of those people who thinks that bugs are cute, I find them kind of hit or miss. Do you have a favorite bug, Crystal? Not really. Butterflies. butterflies are pretty great. I gotta say, I'm a big fan of moths, like real fluffy poodle moths. Kind of like the ones we did last week for that, not last week, but a couple weeks ago for the textile moth project. I don't know if I've ever seen one of those in real life. I did, however, once see a, a hummingbird uh, moth in my backyard. Ooh. Which they are the same size as a hummingbird. Uh, Wild. <laughs> Just happy I boys. Picture now after we could like. I'm I'm always down to see a good moth. Honestly, <laughs> I don't know what type of moth it was, but there was this gorgeous moth my partner and I found out at a stage build we were doing, and I I put this moth on my head because I didn't want it to get. Um, hurt while we were hauling plywood and taking things down and yeah this moth just chilled on my head for a good hour or so and it just had the most beautiful blue and pinks in its wings and I just thought it was real cute. So now I'm getting to painting my disc and as you can see uh, just like Crystal said the coverage is much better with the student grade acrylic. Yeah, I can see where you'd like the black peeking through because I can see, because I'm seeing bits of red peeking through, which if you want to be really morbid, it could be like a giant ant that I'm painting. That's dead, of course, not alive. <laughs> However, because you're seeing that red, right? It's like a fire ant. Yeah. <laughs> Spicy ants. Red and gold is kind of a nice combination too. I'm thinking like Christmas or Gryffindor. 
for any of the Harry Potter fans out there. So the wood plaques should dry fairly quickly if you haven't put a whole ton of paint on them. Which again, don't need a whole lot. The wood likes to absorb it as well, so that will be a factor in drying, whereas uh, if you're using something like, again, a lower quality paint on the uh, plastic insects, because the plastic isn't absorbent, it might take a little bit longer to dry. So I'm just gonna let my, oops, 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 oops. Also, probably most of you will think of this, but just in case you forgot, it's always good to do the sides of your plaque too, makes it look nice and finished. Just going around that edge there. Just how I actually got paint on my fingers, however, so it's yeah. nice and left me a paper towel that was wet here. So. <laughs> I'm used to making messes, so I'm like, I'll, I'll, I'll get you set up. Uh, yeah, no, I make, actually, no, it's, uh, it's good right now, but I was painting some alcohol the other day. Yeah, I managed to get it all up on my arm, and my fingers are always covered. And... <laughs> Just all over. Uh, interesting fact, at our house, um, in the basement where my art studio is, and I love this room, it's north-facing light, beautiful. Ooh, yeah. Uh, we don't have Florian in it yet. My husband purchased it, and he has said, yeah, no, we're just going to wait until we move out. <laughs> yeah. Because I make too much messes, too many messes in my art studio for there to be uh, nice Florian. Nice Florian. <laughs> I feel that. Life with artists, right? Yeah. All right. So my plaques are nearly dry. I do have some handy that I'm just going to switch out. Just gonna pretend that these are the ones that have dried. Oops, there's a little hair stuck to it. And I have these two insects that I already prepared. So I'll just demonstrate gluing them to the plaques. Pretty simple. I kind of like this mantis. I gotta say the way the mantis looks, it's uh, it comes off the plaque. It's a little bit too big, but you know, it kind of looks cool. So we've got this little beetly guy here. And when you're sticking these on, uh, you don't want to be overly sparing with your glue. Just because you have all these little ridges and whatnot, you want to make sure they are nice and secure. So I'm going to do a pretty generous line right down the middle of my critter here. Going to gently take him by his little beetle legs and place him it in the center of my plaque. And I can feel that little guy is nice and secure, so he's all good. And I'm gonna do the same with our mantis. This one's a little more complicated. I'm trying to get a lot of glue on these little funny legs here. This one definitely needs a bit extra just to make sure it's good and secure. <laughs> And ooh, I think, yeah, right there looks, right there looks good. Ah, oh, so fun. I love how these look. I'm a big fan of black and gold as a color palette, and I find insects are just, you know, I'm not always a big fan of encountering them in the wild, especially those, uh, those, uh, whatchamacallem, the pine beetles, the ones with the big ol' antennas that fly at you. If you've ever been bitten by one of those, let me tell you, it stings. I accidentally sat on one of those poor guys yeah. once and, um, you know, naturally he bit me because I probably would if I was a bug and a human sat on me too. But aesthetically speaking, I do like bugs. They're very cute. You want to know what else can bite you? My husband doesn't believe me. However, <laughs> those big... Um, uh, dragonflies, the huge ones that are kind of red. Oh! I had one a long time. I would bite for I landed on my ear, took a bite out of my ear. Oof. Yeah, so I'm okay with the, the little blue ones, but the, mm -hmm. little, the bigger red ones. Yeah. Like, mm, not a good time. Yeah. So I don't know, maybe it was something he, I startled him or whatever. I don't know, but ever since then, I'm like, nope. I'm kind of terrified of them. Just gonna give them a wide berth. Along with wasps. Yeah. Well, I think 
I'm sure they have some purpose in the ecosystem, but uh, it, wasps are a no for me, dog. <laughs> Okay, so one time, this is back a long time ago before COVID, but my mom and I were on this uh, garden tour and there was a group of adults who were waiting to leave and or like to get on the bus. And so we're all standing there and this wasp goes over to my mom. We're like on opposite sides. Yeah. And so she kind of shoes it away. <gasps> wasp direct, directly flies to me. Oh and no. It smelled similar and attached itself to my armpit. Oh uh, no. no. I, no. Did it sting wow. you? He was biting me. He was holding on, and I could not get him off. Not <laughs> a good time. Yeah. Anyway, no. <laughs> Don't like the wasps. Not a fan. I hear no. you. All right. So for this today, I do have these lovely sticky back magnets. Again, dollar store special. Um, so you can glue them if you don't have sticky back uh, magnets. Or how well is this sticking? Oh, this is sticking pretty well. I was going to say, even if they're sticky on the back, uh, but you find that they are not super, not quite sticky enough, you can always add some glue. Uh, but today, these are these are working fine. These don't strike me as being super high-powered magnets. So I'm going to put four of them on just so that uh, if you're putting them on your fridge, you know, you want them to be nice and secure. Yeah, something I didn't realize when I'd gotten bitten by that uh, June bug or pine beetle or whatever you want to call them is they, they take a little chunk out of you. So do wasps. Oh, yeah. nasty. Sure do. I like how we started this art project being like, yeah, cute insects. And now it's like, also they'll take a chunk out of you. <laughs> oh. If you've had a... Uh, pleasant or unpleasant experience with a bug, feel free to drop a comment and let us know. I love a good story. <laughs> All right, so we've got some nice little magnets. I wish we had a sheet of metal to demo what this would look like. Uh, we don't right now, but you know, you can always just take them over to your fridge and see how well it worked for you. <laughs> And so again, yeah, we just wait for everything to dry and then that's your project. You have some lovely gilded insect magnets once you've finished this up. I think it's pretty cool. I'm glad you think so. I thought it was a real cute project. Which is one of the reasons why it's like, I will be the guest today. <laughs> You're like, I want some magnets. <laughs> awesome. Well, that was a nice short and sweet project. Of course, uh, keep in mind that when you're doing this at home, it'll probably take a little longer. Uh, we like to occasionally have sort of like halfway finished projects just to make the demo go a little more smoothly. Um, do we have any questions in the chat? I'm going to check really quickly in the comments. Oh, I don't see anyone in the comments. So I think at this point, we're probably good to call so it a day. Show next week's project? Oh, Oh goodness, yes. So before we call it a day, I will show you next week's project. I believe, Crystal, you'll be leading this one? I do, yes. Gotta with say, a surprise guest. with a surprise guest. Uh, I gotta say, I'm a big fan of these. Uh, the gray paper is real gorgeous. So we have these uh, symmetrical mandalas. Yeah, I called them colorful circle. I can't remember. Oh, geez, my bad. <laughs> oh, heck, oh, geez. <laughs> um, Colorful circles, colorful mandalas. So colorful circles with colored pencils. Yes, there we go. Ah, yes. So, yeah, this looks like a very fun project. Uh, if you want to tune in, again, same time, same place. Uh, and, as always, if you would like to get in touch with the museum or see any of our previous broadcasts, you can go to our museum at www.reddeermuseum.com. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube and I believe Twitter. I think so. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we're on Twitter too. All right. So thank you to everyone who tuned in for our project today. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Have a wonderful Bye. Tuesday.